do Karen. Yep. Right, up next is Karen from Verizon, one of our great sponsors. I'm going to hand this over to you. Usually the TV people put this on for me, and I don't have to. I don't have to do it. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Karen Smith with Verizon Wireless, and I'm uh, in public relations manager for the Great Plains region, which is Minnesota, Iowa, North and South Dakota, and Nebraska. And although I'm based out of the Twin Cities, I am a native Iowan, so I'm back home. I'm originally from Waterloo, and uh, so it's it's great to be here. What I want to do is share with you my journey uh, in social media, in, in Twitter, and engaging social media communities um, in my uh, role at Verizon Wireless in a major corporation. is to engage new media, um, bloggers, and uh, influential members of social media communities. And the third is really just to engage with consumers, right? Consumers of technology, whether they're in my region or across the country. So um, how I got started in all this was in 2008, um, I noticed that public relations was really changing. And it really was front and center for me because my top technology reporter at the St. Paul Pioneer Press is Julio Ojeda Zapata, and if you want to send him a shout out, his Twitter handle is at OJZAP, O-J-E-Z-A-P. And Julio had just written a book called Twitter Means Business, and he has another book that just came out called The iPad Means Business. And he's, he's got a lot of different social media platforms, but he reviews a lot of technology products and applications, so he might be someone for you to check out. But one of his counterparts at the paper said, if you want to keep talking to Julio, you better get on Twitter. And uh, I knew he was a man of few words, and he really prefers to be pitched in 140 characters or less. So I got on Twitter. The first thing I did was set up my Twitter account, and he promptly sent out a welcome Karen VZW to Twitter to his 10,000 followers, and I wasn't even sure what I was doing. So it was kind of baptism by fire. But what really surprised me was that it um, deepened my relationship with him because it allowed us to get to know each other a little bit more on a personal basis. As, as opposed to a professional basis. So that was an advantage that I hadn't really um, realized would happen. And I've had other media members that have sought me out um, to be a background or to set up interviews. I've set up entire interviews just through Twitter. So it's been great that some of the traditional media members that are involved in Twitter are using Twitter to source stories and um, you know, arrange interviews and that sort of thing. So I got started on Twitter and then I said, but I really don't understand anything about you know, what social media really is. So I sought out Albert Marugi, and he's here today at Albert Marugi, M-A-R-U-G-G-I. And uh, I said, well, you know, really what is social media? Can you kind of teach me a little bit about what I should be doing? And he said, well, you really need to be engaging in conversations. You need to be engaging in the social media community. So the easy, I have an events background. Um, I had 20 years, my first career, 20 years in women's athletics and um, you know, athletic administration, marketing, and sports information. And so I said, well, that's great. I love events. So we got involved in the community in the Twin Cities. And then we said, but you know, I said, well, what about the rest of my region? So Albert did a search, and there were, um, I think it was, was 4,200 people on Twitter in Des Moines. 
So we said, well, that looks like a fertile ground. So we sought out Nathan T. Wright, and uh, we set up a social media breakfast here in Des Moines. And um, we had a panel, and the panel was really about app development for Apple, which we were not carrying at the time, Apple products as well as Android products. And we had a standing room only crowd. And it gave us an opportunity to also have a panelist, better not move around, also have a panelist to talk about you know, how wireless fits into that. Because let's, let's uh, face it, you know, mobile technology and social media really go hand in hand so that you can be updating and communicating on the go. So another objective from the events is to find people that are bloggers or influencers that want to test some of our products and then want to write about that experience. And it's not a pay for play thing, it's really just loaning products like I would to traditional media and having people test it out. So there's really a couple of different areas there. We find people that are um, technology people that really tear the product apart and get into all the, the, the really technical specs. And one of those is not able to be here today, but uh, Joe Hobot out of Des Moines, and he's at DM Joe. And, um, and then also just regular consumers that can talk about you know, how products are really used. So Jody Halstead is speaking the afternoon, this afternoon, and she's at IA Traveler. And what Jody does is really um, take the product on the road with her. She has a travel blog and shoot little videos, let her kids play with the Zoom tablet and that sort of thing, and really just give a real consumer experience. Um, so back in the beginning of uh, 2009 uh, at Verizon Wireless, there was only a handful of us on Twitter. Um, the corporation had a Facebook page. Um, and we were not nearly as advanced as we are today in, in social media. So with our regional structure, we have 21 regions in Verizon Wireless that operate as smaller businesses. You know, I had the autonomy in my position to really kind of feel my way around. Figure out. So how do you measure success? You know, certainly a clout score is one way to measure success. And when you work in a corporation, they're always looking for, you know, how do you measure success? But I would argue, too, that having 70 people at a packed Mars cafe, you know, tweeting out to their um, social media friends about the event itself and about Verizon is success as well. Um, one thing I know is that um, relationships are really important. They've been important in my career, whether I was in, you know, athletics or whether I was in public relations. And you know, the great thing about social media is it's relationship-based and getting to know people you might not otherwise ever have gotten to know. Being authentic, I think, is really important. And that's why on my Twitter handle, um, I am representing the corporation, but I do talk about one of my personal passions, which is, of course, sports, the Iowa Hawkeyes, not Iowa State. And uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a letter winner in field hockey and a graduate of Iowa. And my whole family went to the University of Iowa. And, um, and women's sports, because I spent 20 years in, in women's athletics and helping advance women's athletics. And the great thing about women's sports and social media is that you can actually get information that you can't get in the traditional media. And as a WNBA fan, you can actually tweet with some of the different players. And I have season tickets to the Minnesota Lynx and, and uh, really enjoy uh, following them and following them on Twitter. So, you know, engaging with consumers is important. You know, being available, being accessible is important. And then, there's always um, great people that you can find to follow. And I, I don't want to get his Twitter handle wrong. I don't know if he's here. I've never met him. But one of the fun people I like to follow is Pete Jones. Maybe some of you follow him. And his Twitter handle is Des Moines is not boring. DSM is not boring. And he's proving that one tweet at a time. So thanks for having me. <laughs>